Okay. Can you to turn on the, your the volume on? Hello. Then, hello. I'm watching. Hello. Okay. Can you introduce yourself for a while before starting? Henry. Yes, yes. I, I can hear. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, this is Henry Ong. Yeah. I'm the um, managing director for Young Entrepreneur Society. We are based in the Philippines. Our, our organization has uh, around 5,000 members of uh, young entrepreneurs. And uh, we are actively promoting startups and entrepreneurship in our country. So thank you for your invitation and uh, congratulations for a very successful event. Thank you for coming today. So Thanks. So we have the the moderator, the Lisa. I can give you to the speak, or I have a the lead for a while, and then you can do it or not. Which is better for you? Okay. So thank you, everyone. So, yep, I'll be the moderator for today. So um, later on in five to ten minutes. So while waiting for the others to gather. So we will then start uh, the final teaching session. Recording and, in progress. Yep. And then I will start by introducing um, the evaluation criteria, the judges as well, and then uh, how the presentations flow and then the order of the presentation. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so can you have a... I, I try to uh, talk to Scott to find some out, <coughs> other uh, heck for now from Australia. So we, we can talk later. Yeah. Now the student is not coming. Huh? Uh, first, the team is uh, the triple score, triple share. So please let me know who is going to be a the speaker presenter in your team. So All you don't, so you the don't call them uh, to come everyone, right? Just just only the team that gonna do the present. Okay. So we, we will live, right? Yeah, yeah, we're in the live in the heck, uh, have fun now page one. So yeah, every already. teams type to the text one is easy. <clears throat> so I think, Lisa, you can start it. Okay, hold on. Will you make it live first and then we start? Um, oh, we're like already doing the live now, so we can start anytime. Oh, I mean the life? Yeah. Okay. Yes, already live in Facebook of Hack for Now. Now. Oh. So let's go. Okay. You okay. can share with your Facebook or Facebook group. Uh, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> okay, so let me start.
Okay, hi everyone. So welcome to the final pitching of uh, Hack for Now. So this is the event that we've been doing since uh, July 16 until today, July 18. And today will be the final pitching that there will be some teams from Young Challenger team and also from the Teen Challenger teams will do their final yeah, pitching. Let's go. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay, so this event uh, is conducted by We Make Now and we got some supports from the co-hosts as well as uh, the partners. So here are the co-hosts. So we have Ria, who is a entrepreneur and an entrepreneur, Brain Adventure, Krebis Factory, and also Bibimbap Design Thinking Institute. And as for the partners, we have Future Food Institute, uh, Mechai Bamboo School, Color Space, Creatima Consulting, Young Entrepreneur Society from Philippines, mm -hmm. and also Magic Seeds Community. Yep. So, uh, first of all, congratulations to the top six of Young Challenger Group. So we have Triple Share from Thailand, Veganic from Thailand, and Core ID from Indonesia, MPS from Thailand, The Winner from Indonesia, and The Catalyst from Brunei Darussalam and Timor Leste. Congratulations to, let's give the virtual applause to them. And also for the top six in Team Challenger Group, so we have Pocket Nurse from Indonesia, KMIDS from Thailand, CAP from the Philippines, uh, So It Begins from Malaysia, Hope from Bangladesh, YBL Thailand, and also Youth of Your from Thailand. Also, let's give a big virtual applause to these team challenger groups as well. Okay, so throughout the three days of Hack for Now, so we have uh, met this incredible speakers. And also today, after the final teaching, we will also have uh, another session with two of our speakers. So yep, they're sharing a lot of important things and also giving insights to you. And then you can also learn something from them, I believe. And also, uh, we also have some mentors during your mentoring session that are uh, helping you in improving your project and then also uh, giving you feedback and insights as well. So thank you so much to our speakers and mentors. And uh, so still remember this one, this is the timeline of your previous presentation that you did yesterday during the mid presentation. So on day two, and then today is your final pitching or final presentation. So later on each uh, team, so the top six of the young challenger group and also top seven of the teen challenger groups will have to do the five minutes pitching and then continued by another five minutes of Q&A with the judges. And for the scoring system itself, it will be taken uh, from the mid presentation for 30% and 70% uh, taken from the final presentation performance. Okay. And then for the prices itself, for Hack for Now, there will be uh, the best innovative idea, the best creative idea, the best social idea. And for the top three award, uh, they will join the Jump for Now, which is a seven week online incubation program in which uh, throughout the program, you will have a workshop about design thinking and effective pitch, and then mentoring time, and then pitching day or demo day. So this one is for uh, the activities that you will have for the jump for now. Okay, now let's meet our judges, our respective judges for today for the final pitching. So maybe you can say hi. So we have uh, Natnawachiwata Nakul or Tony. So he's the director of Young STEM and A Entrepreneur from Thailand. Hi, Tony. Hi. Hi, everyone. Yeah, okay. Natnawat. Yeah, okay. Just say hi, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Next, the second one we have Antonius Malambarus, the CEO of Priya from Indonesia. Hi, Antonius. Hi, hi everyone. Nice to meet you. Okay, next, our uh, third judges, we have Michael Lee, the master chef uh, from Bibimbap Design Thinking Institute, South Korea. Hi, Michael. Hello, good afternoon, good afternoon. Okay, next, oh, we have Scott Cole. So he's the CEO of Color Space from Australia. Hi, Scott. Hi, everyone. And last but not least, we have Henry Ong. Uh, he's the managing director of YES Philippines. Hi, Henry. Okay. Or uh, the first one is uh, a, a, a the innovative idea and a business model, and then we have the third aspect is the competitive advantages compared to competitors, and the last one is whether your presentation skills are effective or not. So each of them are twenty five points maximum. So it will make the sum up of uh, 100 points, okay. And yep, I think we can, we can start our first group, okay. But before that, let me explain this one. So uh, later on, I will uh, also set the timer since each group will have uh, five minutes. So exactly five minutes for your pitching. So five minutes for your final presentation. The time limits will be strictly enforced. So uh, finish or not, we will stop you. So you need to manage your time wisely. And then after that, there will be another five minutes for the question and answer with the judges. Okay, hopefully it's clear for everyone, for every team. And let's start the first team from Young Challenger Group. So here is the order. So the first one will be triple share and then followed by Vekanik and Core ID, MPS, the winner and the catalyst. Okay, so now for the first group, let's have the triple share group from Thailand. Hello, so I start sharing my screen now, right? Yeah. Yes, so the timer will okay. start when you start explaining, okay? Okay, can you see the slide? Yes. All right. Okay, uh, I have a question before we start. Do we get to see like the timer during the presentation as well? Or uh, no, but I'll, I'll share. Time? Yeah, I'll let you know uh, through the chat box. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so if you are ready, okay. you can just start. All right, I'm ready. Okay, hello, we are Triple Share from Thailand. Uh, today, we proudly present to you our project, Kid Create Food Pack. So we believe that children at a very young age is in the most important stage to build a strong foundation of their health, personality, confidence, and relationship. So the problem happened when the children started to refuse to eat vegetables and healthy food. It has been the number one concern for many mothers uh, to seek any ways or tricks to get their child enough nutrition. It is very important because young children don't really know what is good or bad for them. They may turn to snacks, candies, or food with high fat or sodium. Moreover, nowadays children become even more distracted because of TV, games or tablets that are easy access to them. So the relationship between the child and the parents can become distant. Here, we present to you our product that would help solve the problem. It is the kit, uh, it is a starter kit DIY food menus where children 
can experience and have fun crafting their meal with their parents together. The product provides good quality ingredients and tools for the child to create their own dish. We want to become the part of their memories of being proud and creative for making something by themselves while also getting good nutrition from the meal. We want to connect the local farmers to provide fresh fruits and vegetables to the children. We believe that food is the connection and love that mothers and parents give to the children. And next will be the three menus that we came up with. Our product will be served to the children aged three to six years old. So we have classified the product according to the age. First, we have milk custard with fruit salad for three years old kids. It is safe for three years old because there is no fire or heat. Children can put some cute more for you to make the jelly meal shape look nice. Then topping with the fruit that we gave for four year kids, we have chicken burrito, we have burrito flour, chicken breast, onion sauce, cheese, avocado. You will need to chop the ingredients we provide into small pieces before mix them together and roll in the burrito. The last one, we have banana pancake. So you have to mix egg, pancake, flour, oatmeal, baking powder together and fry them and add the banana in, then decorate them on a plate. For the business model, we divide to three uh, channels. First is the online channel. This is the main channel during uh, the starting period. By using Facebook and Facebook website and partnership uh, application like the uh, Uber Eats and Grab Food. Second is the online channel, that is a supermarket, casualty store with its, uh, our plan in the long term. And the third is the subscription model. And our mission is to make the kids and people aware the, the, like, of the nutrition problem. So we plan to serve our product to the school every month as a subscription model. Our product can be in shopping classes. Uh, the main point is we will insert the nutrition knowledge into the product. The student can learn and get the experience from it. Uh, next is our target segment. So our target segment will be the parents that have kids at about three to six years old. And they will be the, the person who concerned about their child that have, want to have time with the kids. Also, we target on the school, like the elementary school, primary school, and elementary school. And it is our marketing plan. And yeah, our, our, market, our main strategy is customer relationship marketing. To make the strong band, we have to build the fan community and lead them to be the loyal customer. By using social media, like platform Facebook, and yeah, we will, we will, uh, we will provide the knowledge, right? Nutrition knowledge and create the event that they can join and meet them together. Second is uh, to build the brand awareness. It's joining with the partner, like uh, the Uber and the Uber Eats project. And also with the product marketing, not only have the high quality ingredient, we have to decide the package that um, make our product become one of the dedicated memory. The last, we believe with our over heart that our product will foster family relationship and create experiences and memory for your little one. Children are open to activity that they enjoy and most importantly, as it's irreplaceable, is a family relationship. Imagine your child growing up with fun memory of cooking with their parents. They can be able to pass on the feeling of love that their parents have for them to alter beautifully because children are the most precious of parents. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for the triple share team. So it's exactly five minutes. Now uh, it will be directly proceed to the Q&A session for maximum five minutes. So dear judges, the time is yours. I might start. So thank you for a wonderful um, pitch. And uh, I, for me, I really like the idea of getting kids involved in the co-creation of these dishes. Um, I do have one question, which is from a, actually from a bit of a supply chain and packaging perspective. Uh, what are your thoughts on, or what are your concerns about um, the impact in terms of, you know, how, how do you deal with the, um, you know, ongoing packaging that might be required to package everything up and bring it through. Have you thought about how to address that? Yeah, yes, we plan to, to use the 
I mean the packaging of the carton box. I mean, I mean the carton box that that is the paper box, and it's gonna be like the recycle recycle packaging. It's the box like uh the brown one, and yeah, it's it's still recycle. Yeah, and also add it as a it's a well, it's easy to shipping also. Yes. Also, that child box can like contain the cool and the temperature temperature of the product in inside. Also, yeah. So it's a good way to use like that child of package. Okay. So uh, how about the question? If there's if <laughs> the questions, I've got another question. Um, so one of the other questions is, uh, right at the start, you said that one of the problems you're hoping to address is that um, children are not interested in eating vegetables. So, but the point is, um, in your solutions, uh, I sort of see some desserts or, uh, sorry, see some food items which might lean towards um, things that may look a little bit un unhealthy. So how do you, I guess, combat that or how do you... Um, really get kids interested in take, in that nutrition without sort of resorting to things that are sugary or things that are, you know, like high in fat, for example? Oh, yeah. Well, like the ingredients, like that one, the one that may look like uh, kind of unhealthy, maybe the pancakes that you like think that it's going to be like carbohydrate, like the flour or like the honey or syrup, but like it's, it is made from like oatmeal. So like, oatmeal flour so it's like it's still uh not a, a high fat so it's like it's still a nutrition but we also serve it with like other fruits and vegetables oh no i mean like fruits that are like berries or like bananas like that examples or like with the pancake as well like it mixing fruits or something new and creative within them to give it more nutrition together yeah Okay, <clears throat> my questions. I have one question. Uh, how do you gonna start with the 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 first? Uh, I mean the, the the customer. You gonna start with the school or you gonna start with the public? How are you gonna start it? And first, first we plan to like the key is building the brand awareness first, right? So first we plan to create the impact from the social uh, social media first, and and. Anyway, it can be start together, right? We we can promote the and and give the the knowledge and provide the, some of the content in our Facebook fan page, right? In the social media, and also we can use that content to provide and giving present to the to that yeah, and yeah, as and and we will have to like like uh talk I uh, I mean I mean give it give a point in uh our mission that put it. It is. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, putting putting the 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 people and kids aware about the nutrition knowledge. Yeah. So and anyway, I I think we can do right to to together in the same time. Sorry. So how how you gonna uh, uh protection the copy of the idea because normally the fruit and uh, the food for the kid is easy for um for mom to create their own uh, menu. But if you show the menu in, in the social and then somebody just copy and don't buy from you. Yes. Uh, our key is the band, the, the band, the band loyalty, also the band, uh, the, the strong in, the strong in band that we have to build, create the loyalty fan from the community, from the band character. We have to create the band character to be right what we stand for, what we stand for. And and when 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 we have the I mean the fan cup or the customer that they loyal with with us, our fan gonna be like the protect protect us from from the copy right like, like the case study from the barbecue uh, the barbecue pasta sauce that the the customers we want to have want to buy the 
the thing from the Barbican, not not to buy from the city. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So it's already uh, five minutes for the Q and A as well for the triple share team. Now coming up, we have the second uh, team from the Young Challenger group. We have Fagnik also from Thailand. Are you guys ready, Fagnik team? Yes. Hello. Okay. Hi. So once again, you will have uh, to do your pitching for five minutes, and also the Q and A session after that for another five minutes. If you are ready, okay. you can just start. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Soi and I'm an executive of Veganic. Have you always wanted to switch to a healthy lifestyle? Nowadays, people are starting to focus on their body appearance, health, and pay more attention to the amount of calories they take in a day. Even though organic products play an important role in getting an ish curve, why do people still get into fast food stores? From our research, this is because organic products in the market are way more expensive than normal food. We have always rejected the healthier choices until we meet Bakalo, who introduces us to Sabu, the organic community. After we talked to her, we have discovered several difficulties within the farmer community, such as they're struggling to reach new customers due to limited access to the online market, products are underpriced because of the high commission fees, leftover resources are being wasted, limited groups of connection, and high delivery fees. So we came up with Veganic an online platform to connect farmers with customer groups and give broad access to organic products. Our early customers include organic farmers in the Saburi community and organic food customers. From our interviews, we gain an insight that working edges are the ones who spend on organic product most. Therefore, we aim for the middle-class parents community or friends in Bangkok to be our first group of customers. You might be wondering what you would gain from our platform. For organic farmers, we aim to expand the market of organic vegetable and food to provide faster and more direct contact with customer and gain more profit without commission fees. On the other side, buyer will get good quality products with reasonable prices. Healthier choice and lemon farm and oak box. Our platform is for organic products with affordable prices. Our unique feature consists of a workshop to educate about planting vegetable and fruits to expand the community. We deal with weekly delivery to reduce pollution and delivery fees. Seasonal vegetable and fruits with no chemical, which lead to a healthier lifestyle. From our research, 6.79 billion baht would be a total available market of organic products in Thailand in 2020, when compared to the proportion of the population in Bangkok, which is 571 million baht. In the end, we will take a share of this market. Zero point zero three for minimum of thirty four thousand four hundred sixty four baht in the first year. We will start expanding market strategy to gain wider market share and with word of mouth, we would gain more customer base. Um, this is our revenue protection. We would expand our group of customers within middle to high income groups of people. Number of customers would increase from an average of twenty customers per week in year one to one hundred and thirty five customers in year two. 875 customer in year three, 3,980 customer in year four, and 12,658 in year five. We believe that our solution can bring a positive impact on this five problem of SDG. We are a group of people who see this problem as an opportunity to help the farmers. Even though the farmers have to work as much as usual or be able to sell the same amount of products, they will receive more profit through the selling on our platform, Veganic, which leads to a better quality of life. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. You still have uh, uh, around 40 seconds. Maybe you want to uh, say your last statement. Our last statement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if not, so we will directly proceed to the Q&A session. So once again, dear judges, so the time is yours. So thank you for sharing your wonderful idea. So you mentioned that your price is very good 
and cheaper than competitors. So how could you provide very cheap price to the existing competitors? Um, from, uh, from our um, interview from the farmers in Salapuli, right? We found that the, the, the price of the, the vegetable is more cheaper than other place in, in Bangkok. And we can found this, as you can see from the slide, yeah, that the com comparison of the price is so much different. Mm -hmm. And once we make the delivery for just one a week, once a week, right? It will reduce our cost of a delivery fee too. So that will make our product more cheaper than usual. So I have a question, uh, which is around competitors. Because so what I'm what I'm what I sort of saw for your presentation, which incidentally excellent presentation. So thank you very much for that. Um, uh, have you? What's the research at the moment on competitors? Like, are there anybody else doing this type of online direct to market um, sort of organic farm produce? And uh, do you how how much competitive advantage do you think you can have through your platform? Um, there, there is a lot of big uh, supermarket trying to go through the online platform, right? But um, they will like, they have to pay for many uh, fixed costs, you know, like because of their uh, big companies, but we are um, the small business. So we can move like quickly and more uh, flexible more than them. So that's why their, our um, advantage of, for, of, of them is the, the cheap, cheaper price of product. And I, I see that a lot of new uh, startup that trying to sell the uh, vegetable through online, but there is no um, organic vegetable there for for the for the market. So we will we will be kind of the first, but not really first in vegetable. So it will be like from the early stage, we will start with the um, community in in university of our university. We will sell to our um, professors and our like parents, and there will be more expand in the, the market. All right. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes, please. Um, so I, I want to, to make sure about uh, the position of your business. Is it more like a distributor? Like you want to sell um, vegetables, organic vegetables to customer? Or you have something to do with the farmers? Like, for example, you educate them or like uh, you improve the quality of the food or is there any uh, special things that you are doing rather than just doing a distribution? Okay, for our future plan, right? We, we will start with um, selling the, the vegetable for, for, for the business first and then we will get the, the profit and the profit will give back to the, the farmers. We will teach them how to use smart farm, how to use technology, how to use our platform, and they can sell it by themselves through our platform. And then mm -hmm. in the future, very future, we plan that. to recording in progress Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we still have another 25 minutes, maybe. 25 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, 25 <laughs> seconds. Maybe the judges wants to ask the last question.
Okay, so if not, thank you so much for the team. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you. thank you, Miss. And yep, thank you. And next, we do have uh, the third team from the Young Challenger Group. We have Encore ID. So Encore ID team, are you ready? Okay. Okay. Is it my my voice clear or not? Yes, yeah. it's clear. Okay. Mm. All right. All right. Wait a minute. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Hello, my friends. Encore ID is a storage space for musical talent. The problem. Did you know there are so many musical talent in the world, but many of them never earn any money from music as their hobby. Practicing every day, hoping the music might lead to success, but the world doesn't seem need that kind of talent. Here, Encore ID as solution for unknown Indonesian musician to gain popularity, money, and space to create music with new vibes for enjoying music. The benefit using Encore ID is to get the opportunity to work in a field of music, earn money through live streaming, can join or interact with streamer directly, and Encore ID is the only for music segment in positive way. So the target market for Encore ID is simply internet user in Indonesia, aged 15 to 30 years old, and of course, music lover, with population 56 million. The monthly target of active user, active user for five years with estimate three months in first year in 2022, around 10,000 user. With profit and loss as follow with an increase every year. Marketing is more important thing. Therefore, in the first three months, of the year, it costs around thousand dollars. Let's find out the more reason to use Encore ID. First is join or interact directly with streamer without delay, fill the noise or chit chat with other like concert in different way, video and audio editing without their app, connecting talent with, with, with viewer and music producer and much more. Encore ID, Want to be better than the competitor head, music segmented, live streaming, more opportunity for music talent, and other. Let me show you the prototype we met. Here the onboarding. Register like common. Choose the genre and the style is more like TikTok or, or Instagram, but you can join and interact directly, request song. Here a content for music talent, like video or track. Here the menu following and the user menu. So the idea is the streamer can streamer and viewer can join. Like for example, the streamer is uh, singing and the viewer can join and and play some guitar with short delay or maybe without delay, but in the other way, you must be test the internet connection, right? Okay. Here, the business model for Encore ID, by including the various possible result from our learning progress so far. So for the business, you can 
you can gain the money from from the request music and much more. And Core ID founded by five people with different specialization. And by the end of this, this presentation, I would like to say that good product always has positive, positive social impact and good business. All right. I'm finished. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, yep. Encore ID. Now let's proceed to the Q&A session for <coughs> five minutes. Uh, the time is yours, judges. So can I ask, um, in terms of, you, you articulated a problem for musicians, which is finding more audiences. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the problem for customers, for the audience, for the consumers who are the people who are paying for this? What, what do you think is the problem you're solving there? The problem for the audience or viewer, it's uh, they want listen music like concert in real, vibes but like to chat but in in noisy way you can you can hear the voice the singer but you can still hear the voice interaction in in your side just like that so you can feel the real concert So when do you launch your application? So how much you are ready to go to the market? What, excuse me? Because you develop application, you wanna mm -hmm. launch. Launch? You wanna launch this. You wanna ask the people to use one. So when do you wanna start, go to the market? Mm -hmm. So the first I will launching the product I will share with trial, mm -hmm. maybe for our friends on my teammates around to get a hundred maybe. So we can we can get the feedback for business. This business uh, can be be valuable for fewer or not. So mm -hmm. if not, we can build another way but in but in still the music segment I see. Uh, I've got another question do, do you have any sense of what your um, I guess market size is for something like this like how, how many how many audience what's the population size for the audience that you think will be interested in live concerts but through an app. Mm, I will let the the presentation the presentation have have the market's target. We use a Facebook analytic, uh, but in the category just music lover, fifteen or to thirty years old. The population may be around fifty. 56 million, but in uh, that in Indonesia, not our, not our scale, small scale, maybe around 200, 2,100, maybe. So in practice, I uh, have some question. In practice, uh, the singer can be in, in one city and uh, the musician is will be in another city and then they can play together. They can sing a song like what we can do like during the COVID. So we can sing a song right now and then with <coughs> uh, collaboration with the many people from many cities at the same time, right? Yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. we want to do, right? Yeah. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to be the event based only, not not the ongoing, you have to create the event and then you bring the people to join the, the concert. 
and yeah, yeah, yeah. people stay at home. Okay. Yep. 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 Okay. And do you think how much you're gonna charge for one event? For event is free, but in the business value for Encoredi, we get profit from streamer. Can streamer can can earn money from request music, so we cut off 10% and are advertising like Spotify or something. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, right. yep. Thank you. Uh, so okay. that's the end of the Q&A session. Okay. With Anchor ID. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. And next, coming up, the fourth team from the Young Challenger Group, we have MPS team from Thailand. So for the MPS team, who will be the uh, presenter? Okay. Is MPS team here already? Hello, can you hear us? Yes. Yep. Now you're audible. Okay. Sorry, this is our, uh, we have some mistake about our microphone. Um, our microphone has got a problem. <laughs> So, okay, so can you guys hear us? Yes. Yes. Okay, so, hello everyone, this is One by One Chef Project from MPS team, team Thailand. So, what problem that our SE will solve? Um, I'm so sorry, everyone. I think we have got a device problem. Take your time. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, excuse me, can you hear us? Yes. Yep. Okay, so for our one by one share business, um, it's a project which is created by MPS Team Thailand. So for what problem that our SE will solve? About a years ago, we went to Ban Quang Noi community, which is the community that our school uh, located on. We have done some research with the villagers and we find out that the thing that the community need to improve the most is the elderly income. And this is the picture when we went to do our research in Bang Bang Noi. After we found out that we have to help the elderly to increase their income, we support the elderly to grow some vegetables and sell it to our school. But this project can be helped just only five of the elderly. So we start thinking about the other business that can be help the rest of the elderly in this community. So we came up with organic paper, which is a new innovation that one of our teammates, Nata, she knows a lot and she has done this project before. And the material that we and the the process of producing our product the material we process it into the paper with our chemical and use the kitchen where to make it be the products such as notebook or uh, name card and our business goal is number one is the elderly and the income and supplementary occupation and two is the buyer receives the product and help the society source mm -hmm. the purchasing and number three is the infer oh, receive encouragement and give and our business activities open the free class 
for the elderly in the real grade who are interested in our project. And oh, then we uh, order for our products and then produce the product according to the customer order and deliver the products to the customer and disability people. And the last one, we will open up a paper course for the people who are interested, teach by the elderly people. And we have started this business three years ago already by opening the course for the elderly people around our school who are interested. But we stopped it because we all have graduated the school. But we think we want to redo it again. We still have the page on Facebook called Organic People, and we want to make it again to be the business. So why we do this business? Um, for the customer group. We aim to reach the customer who are interested in SE, who are relatively good financial standing, who like DIY stuff, who are looking for a gift to others, and who cares about the environment. And this is a picture of our customer. Most of them are the visitors who come and visit our school. But um, I mean, three years ago, we have already started this business and we do have um, our Facebook page. So we do have some online customer as well. And what and how we first one is by force and private transport. Next is the emotion of empathy and sharing. And the teaching cost. And the last one is one product for a customer and one gift for an underprivileged for their party uh, birthday. And how does our business impact? First one is forming a group to do SE makes the elderly generate income and additional career. The second is the buyer receive products according to their needs and also share with other from purchasing product through us. Underprivileged group are encouraged through a gift that the buyers has delivered. Create value from waste from agricultural products, fruit peels, flour from banquets or green waste, and the last one, the products we deliver include handmade notebooks, postcards, business cards, seed paper, product made from organic paper, and knowledge within the process of making paper from green waste. And finally, the profit we earn from doing business will be divided into two parts. The 70% of profit will be kept for receipt and business expansion, and 30% of profits will be used for social activities. Thank you. Okay, so thank you so much for the pitching uh, MPS team. Now that we have another five minutes for the Q&A. So, yep, I'll let the judges to be on the stage. Thank you. Hi, hi, MPS. Hello. Hello. Hi, hi, yes. Uh, um, it's interesting uh, to, to see your, your business there. But I saw from your presentation that you seems like you do it like educating the elderies. Uh, it's offline, right? It's like you invite them, come to your place and then teach them. How you can do the adjustment during, the, during this condition when people cannot go anywhere, they have to work from the home, and how you think that you can adjust with this condition. Thank you so much. Um, thank, thank you for the question. So um, most of our business, we do it offline, but now we are starting to think about the online business because our product is most of paper. So it's easy to for the transportation. And we also think about a strategy called one by one share, which is um, you know, like a name of our projects as well, because we want to attract the customer to come and um, buy our um, our products. We don't want them to be just only customer. We want them to um, to be a part of our business, and we also want them to know that their money can also help the other people. So this is from mm -hmm. the thing that Mr. Michai Wirawai say about the CSR, which is about customer responsibility. Uh, customer social responsibility. So yeah, we want to make our customer feel that they are not just customer, but they are our partner. Mm -hmm. And for the for the knowledge, the to the elderly people, um like Noon said that we want to start it in online also, 
And I think nowadays the innovation or the IT is be more uh, like important in nowadays mm -hmm. and i think our knowledge can be shared by our why we can take the videos how to do it and how to make the organic paper we also have the youtube channel already and we have some the followers on our channel so i think we can share our knowledge on their platform and other elderly people from another place can learn and can sell the products to us also All right Interesting. Maybe you can share your YouTube channel as well on the on the chat so that everybody can see it. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, I've got a question. Um, I, I really like this idea. Actually, I, I think it's really uh, interesting to hear uh, both a way to address food waste whilst also creating um, an income for people. So my questions are around the, the creation process. So is there, what's the, is there a big investment needed for this process to happen is part one of the question. The second part of the question is how do you ensure a consistency of quality? So for customers who might want to buy this from around the world, how do you ensure that each or the paper have, a, have good consistent quality to them? Okay. Okay, so for this business, the in, in we have to invest on the some kitchenware because the way to make the organic paper, we use just only kitchenware to possess it. So it's easy for the elderly to find this because they actually have it in their house. And yeah. for the second question is about the quality of our products. This is what we also think about. We think um yeah, so maybe we can show. This is a product that we have kept for like two years and we have already put some seeds in the in the paper. So after you use the paper, you can just throw it on the ground and then water it and then the, the vegetable will like grow growing up. So this is a new innovative that we think about. And for the um for the quality, I think that we have to set up about our quality before we buy it from the elderly. We have to tell them um how the qualities have to be like. In the textures of the uh, of the paper or something like that. Hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. So the you already produced the paper right now, is it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Maybe I have one more question. Uh, can you uh, make a, a clarification about the? The, the, the paper that you made, is it from, you said that it's uh, from green waste, right? So yes, uh, yes. Can, can you define what is the green waste that you mean? Like what kind of a green waste that can be used as the raw material for your, uh, I mean, for the paper? Is there any specification? Um, Yes, um, the, about the material we use for produce the, our paper that we say the green waste, it can use any material that from the natural, like the vegetable you have left from your kitchen or the, yes. Uh, the, the thing the, that we can yeah. make it small and we can blend it. Yes. Yeah, so it can, the thing that can go to the blender, I mean that. So just like this one, the texture is really, you know, hard. It's not like really soft because we use the high apple peel. So just anything that we can make, the, that the thing that we can chop it and make it smaller and we can blend it. Thank you so much. Good work. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, um, PS team. So we can see their enthusiasm in answering the questions. Okay, now coming up, we have the fifth uh, team. So just now we had MPS team. Now we move to the next team, which is the winner, uh, the winner team from Indonesia. So are you guys here for the winner team? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, yep. Okay. okay uh,
Uh, you have to win, cannot lose. <laughs> So, uh, can you see my screen now? Yes. Can you make it full screen? Thank you. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, am I audible now? Am I voice? Can you hear my voice? Yes, it's very clear. Okay, uh, first, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, hi, everyone. We are the winner team, and now we will present our project. Uh, first one, we're really concerned about the renewable energy to reduce the amount of waste. And we change it into... So, based on... The data from the world count, we know that globally, we generate about more than 2 billion waste per year. And it is dominated by the plastic waste, which is it's uneasy to decompose. And our second problem is we know that the non-renewable energy, such as coal, are really limited and For our business model, Recording in Our progress. The market, market is MSMS industry and some small industry that product product the non food production. But as business to business, uh, we we will run this business to business after we getting enough uh, customer. It's around maybe two or three years and our target is we cooperate with Indonesian Exim Bank for export to another country. And we also will cooperate with PT Semen Indonesia in semen industry that will be, because they are really committed into industry, 30% uh, they will using renewable energy. So waste frequent is really, uh, it's really uh, audible for them. And the next is uh, we also, We'll cooperate with some companies that need request as a fuel for their production. Okay. Furthermore, regarding the market price of the waste briquette product, after we have uh, calculated starting from fixed costs, which includes direct labor costs, rental costs, equipment costs, to, dep to the depreciation costs, and other costs. And then after that, we calculate about variable costs uh, such as leftover vegetable, tapioca flour, water, and fuel. So, and all, uh, we get uh, the cost of good sales of around uh, 26 uh, million, or when we calculate in dollar, is around uh, $1,816. And uh, for profit and loss, it can be seen from the table on the screen as we have uh, calculated with uh, include of the cost of uh, goods sale and gross profit from income, market cost, net profit before tax, tax are uh, 10%, uh, net profit after tax, and net profit uh, per, per, per kilogram. And we have a uh, Around net income, uh, when we calculate it in dollar, is 
around 1,987 $1, uh, to dollar. So next about West Bricket are unique. So the second one is compacting biomass waste into briquettes reduce the volume by 10 times, making it much easier to store and long distance transport. And the material of waste are easy to find out. And the third can create the job opportunities for society. And the last, uh, we briquette can store for a long time and more economical to use. And this is our teams. So thank you. Okay, thank you so much, the winner team. So it's yep, exactly five minutes. Now we will proceed to the Q&A session for another five minutes. Okay, let me invite the judges to ask the questions. So you have a very good uh, business mention about the technology. Is using the rubbish um, energy one. So do you have uh, such a technology to make it? Excuse me, Mr. Michael, I can't hear you. So I mean, so, so, okay, maybe, the sound, the sound. Okay, so other so, just, uh, the judges go uh, first. So I'll figure out my problem. Hello. Sorry, okay, so I've, I've got okay, so I've Hello. Got there is an echo. There is an echo. Uh, Michael. Uh, Michael. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. I'm the sorry. I'm clear, clear here. Clear. Yes, hello. Can I ask? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, hello. Yeah. Uh, this uh, product is uh, like a charcoal, right? Charcoal. It's like a charcoal, your product, right? Yes. Do you use yes. this for cooking? Use this for cooking? For cooking, barbecue. Do you use that? Can you can we oh, use that, your product? Oh. No, we cannot no, use we our briquet for food because food. it because it uh, conduct the... the there's there's some plastic on this briquet, so we cannot use it to to cook the food. All right. So you use that for what? For lighting or what? What do you use for? From our project, we really focus about industry. For example, Indonesia, there is a batik industry and etc. I see. Okay, very good. Thank you for clarification. Thank you. So I have a question as well. Um, I, I didn't hear about um, who's actually creating these briskets. So, or rather, what's your process? Because you're taking organic food. Um, I, I guess there's a process to make it dry so it actually burns properly. And so I'm curious about that process because it sounds like if it's for industry, industry will need to use incinerators. And so how do you know your product actually supports and meets the requirements of that? Okay, I will answer your question, Mr. Scott. So for the first one, how we make our briquette is we collect the leftover vegetables. It's for the example, it's like lettuce and some uh, spinach and etc. and then we, uh, we, we how do they put it on their side, but but in how to say it, it's like a coal and for the plastic we collect it uh especially for the lgpe plastic waste we really concerned about it and we burn it under the under the fire and then while we burn it on on the under under that plastic we put some water we put some water so
and then I, I don't know if anyone else is experiencing this. Uh, this is it's, uh, yes. Just like we yeah. got, we got it. We meshed it into. We meshed it into. Uh, and then after that, we meshed it and and we and we glue it with tapioca floor tapioca floor with okay maybe um the other member of the winner you can help her Afisa. i will i will explain about how to make this uh briquette so the first process is uh, collect the plastic with such a plastic bag bubble wrap or etc and under, uh, under the second one is clean and dry it and this, uh, the next, we burn it. Well burn, burning, put a bowl of water under it in and mask the burned plastic. And the next is we collect the leftover vegetable such as canvas, spinach, or etc., and dry it under the sun, more or less uh, for three days. And the next, we burn it until it become an ash. And the sec, uh, the next is uh, we cook water and tapioca floor with ratio. Uh, uh, one per one. And after that, we combine the compounds of ratio one per one uh, from burned plastic and burned vegetable and glue it with tapioca glue. And the last one is we put it on the tube and put it till compact. Okay, thank you so much. So that's uh, the end of the Q&A session for the winner team. Thank you for the judges as well. Uh, coming up, we have the last team from the Young Challenger group. So it's the, the Catalyst from Brunei Darussalam and Timor Leste. So for the Catalyst team member, are you guys here and ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Very nice. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Is it showing? It's first. Yes. Now we can see it. Okay. If you can make it into full screen, please. Thank you. Okay. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Here we are, the Catalyst, the socially sustainable hub. Our team is consists of two people, me, myself from Brunei Darussalam, as well as my friend, Escolastico from Timor Leste. So here we would like to share our concern on food waste. Food waste are categorized under two groups, which are fruits and vegetables, as well as leftovers of previous meal. So these two categories then go under organic waste. Why is this a problem? This is a big problem because when we actually dispose our food waste, our organic waste is then goes into the landfill. The core, is, the core of our problem is that they are producing methane. And methane is 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide, which then contributes to the 7% of greenhouse gases globally. So here we would like to share our case study in Indonesia. We are focusing in Indonesia because Indonesia is the second largest contributor of food waste worldwide for each individual is producing 300 kilograms in a year. So our initiative to address this issue is to introduce you our star, Black Soldier Fly. Well, here is the lifespan of the BSF. So the first stage is the BSF female flies will lay about 600 to 800 eggs at one time laying edge, and it needs four days for it. And next is the larva stage, which needs 18 days to become the larva after the age stage. 
Next is the pupa stage, which needs 14 days to become the pupa. And that's all about the lifespan of the BSF itself. And we are moving to uh, the question about the reasons to breed the BSF. Why? First, the BSF is easy to breed. We don't need to use the complicated method to cultivate the BSF. Second, it's because the BSF has a large production at the time. The third reason is how fast the BSF can reduce the organic waste quickly. And the fourth is uh, nutritious. Next is why BSF uh, first. Um, oh, the other usage of BSF, sorry. Uh, first, it's for the fertilizer. Second, is for the livestock feed. Well, uh, it's for the promote the food security, and it also could be the cost effective, much cheaper alternatives. And next is why BSF. Mm, first, not production strong at all. And second is efficient and cost effective decomposer. And three, it could be uh, transformed into fertilizer and livestock feeds. Four is new alternative in pharmaceutical industry, which is production of natural grays used in cosmetics. Next is the project plan. First, we are going to start thing in try of food waste and the food waste we, we the food waste obtains from the company and or the individual person. Next, we are Moving to the processing in step, uh, feeding the BSF to decompose the food waste, the organic waste. Next is harvesting the BSF, uh, which is we, we are collecting the pupa and the adult BSF. And the fourth and last step is the processing out, which is uh, the products. We, we make it into the fertilizer and the livestock feed. All right. So our project is to be implemented in Jakarta, Indonesia, specifically in the suburbs area. So why suburbs area? Because we would like to empower the communities in there and to, to actually involve the local communities in the suburbs area. And we will, our target is to only involve one kilometer, one kilometer um, within the radius of our hub. So this comes to our goals. We have four main goals, which are to first um, establish a hub that actually supports SDG goal number 12 and number 17. And the next one is to significantly reduce the production of food waste and also to promote and encourage advocacy as well as young entrepreneurship that also supports SDG goals from the United Nations. That would be all from us together towards achieving sustainable development goals, change makers unite. Thank you. Okay, so thank you so much for the Catalyst team. Yep, so now it's uh, the Q&A time for another five minutes. And I would like to invite the judges to ask the questions. Thank you. Um, so thank you for your presentation. Uh, I guess my first question is, I'm not sure what your business actually is at the moment. So I don't, I don't really know who your customers are. Like, are you, um, like, who, who are you selling this to? And I, I wasn't also sure what your solution is. Uh, is it a factory that processes food waste or is it a hub? So can you just sort of elaborate on, you know, who your customers are and what problems you're solving for them as well? So um, the Qatarist hub is not profit oriented. Basically, it's just, um, it's, it's just a social enterprise with a goal that with an aim to reduce um, food waste production in Indonesia. So the only uh, revenue streams that we gain are from selling fertilizers and also the livestock feed um, that our target it, as mentioned in the um, presentation are only within one kilometer radius from our hub in the suburbs area. So our target is mainly everyone, the lo basically the local communities in Jakarta, Indonesia. Yeah. So I guess then a follow up question if the other judges don't have questions uh, yet is that, um, so even you say um, you're doing something for the local community, 
uh, I guess I'm still not 100% sure what that thing is. So wh what, I'm, what I'm saying is that it's, you've got a really interesting solution of using black soldier flies to process food waste. But is this a, like, is waste goes into a factory and then you control a production of um, waste decomp decomposition? Or do you mean you're just going to release flies into like a landfill? Like, oh. I, that's the part I'm not sure about. I, I don't know what you're actually doing. Um, so the systems of our hub is that our hub is like a very it's not a, it's not a very small it's like a small a small scale um, uh, a small scale place where we will only rent the place like that uh, in the suburbs area and in there we will be um, developing our prototypes which are which is actually not complicated because um, there are only few tools needed to cultivate uh, the black soldier fly. So, like, our hub will only be collecting the food waste from uh, from individual household as well as company. That and like that we will only receive them, not collecting them directly from their places. Okay, we still have around two minutes. Maybe the other maybe from know. me. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh, from me, uh, can yeah, this is a uh, quite funny for me actually. Like, yeah, one of you in Brunei, one of you in in Timor Leste, but you you plan to do it in Indonesia in the suburb. Can you explain a bit about what is a uh, clearly? Uh, your plan since uh, we are in the pandemic right now and then how you guys want to kickstart this project if you are in the separated place. Um, so before I address your question, the reason why we would like to implement this in Jakarta, Indonesia is because we are studying in Jakarta and um, Jakarta is like the most populated area in Indonesia. So we... We think that if we are actually in Jakarta and do, um, and the condition, the circumstance in, in in Jakarta is like they are the most populated area, so it's like it's connected to our aim, which is to reduce the production of food waste in Indonesia as a whole. Um, however, since we are in the pandemic, um, we are actually planning to have it done separately in our respective countries. Because again, um, in order for us to cultivate this um, this uh, black soldier fly, we we not need to use any um, complicated methods. It's just like we are uh, we are having a box and a box like a cage, and we will cultivate them um, in inside the inside inside there. So um, so it's like we are only feeding them and look. Uh, and not necessarily monitor them um, as mon uh, as intensively as monitoring other types of insects or animals. So it is very feasible to, for us to actually um, uh, to actually implement it in our respective countries. Thank you. Okay, actually, this is a good business. I, I heard uh, this idea from Thailand too, but it's still under like uh, <coughs> innovation. Uh, maybe I can link you with some of the people who are in the industry and then you can continue and learn, uh, try to keep, keep uh, study. And then I think this is a good one. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So as the ending of the Catalyst TM speeching, so this it marks uh, the end of the Young Challenger group. Let's give a round of uh, applause again to all of them. They have uh, shown their best in explaining. And next, uh, let me review again the evaluation criteria. 
So we will have four, four aspects. So the judges will evaluate these four aspects, innovative idea, clear business model, competitive advantages compared to competitors, and then the effective uh, presentation skills. Each of them are maximum 25 points. And as well as this one, for the final presentation, there will be five minutes pitching from each group, continued by another five minutes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, for the scoring itself, it will be, it will be taken uh, from the mid presentation, 30%. And for the final presentation, the one that you are performing today, uh, for 70%. And to sum up, 100%. Okay, next, it's time for the Team Challenger group. So we have the top seven here, and this is the order. The first one, it will be Pocket Nurse from Indonesia, and then continued by KMIDS from Thailand, and then KAB or CAP from the Philippines. And then so it begins from Malaysia, Hope from Bangladesh, YBL Thailand, and the last one is Youth of Your from Thailand. Okay, so now let's have the pocket nurse from Indonesia. Are you guys ready? Yep. Yep, okay, very nice. So you can start. Uh, can okay, I have so hi. Yes, we have youth of your team, yes. Uh, can I see the score point again, please? What is it? Uh, the score point that, that uh, the, the criteria. Oh, the criteria. Okay, yes. So here is the evaluation criteria. So there are four aspects, innovative idea, clear business model, competitive advantages compared to competitors, and the last one is the presentation skills. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, so now for the pocket nurse team, the time is yours. You can, if you're ready, you can just start. Am I audible? Yes, it's clear. Okay. Hi, I'm Natalia Lista Chan, and I proudly present the innovation created by my sister and I, Pocket Nurse. My grandparents in Australia once told me that at times when they have fits of coughing, they wouldn't call my mom in fears of disturbing her already busy schedule. But at the same time, booking a doctor's appointment just for a cough would really hurt the wallet. Even if doctors give them a prescription, they often have trouble managing their medicine schedules. They end up going, ah, it's not a big deal. This is a problem, especially in the current COVID-19 pandemic, these situations could be fatal. As we now know, a little symptom can mean so much more. As of 2019, there were 703 million people aged 65 or over. And this number is projected to double to 1.5 billion in 2050 we decided to come up with a solution to aid the aging population, this growing market, and take a big step to reaching the United Nations third sustainable development goal, ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. During our innovation process, we decided that we did not want to create a doctor that will provide the elderly with heaps of medical information they are unable to process. Instead, we aim to create a guiding figure who can understand the patient's background and diagnose specific and simple diseases based on symptoms and medical history, like a nurse. This led to our idea of a holistic healthcare app targeted for elderly users concerned about their health and welfare, but have children with a lack of time and resources to attend to their needs. We used an online platform called Marble to design a prototype of our innovation, Falconers. It is an affordable and accessible app that has multiple functions. Here is the, um, our prototype. It enables the users to buy medicines and vitamins from pharmacies online. and it aids in making doctor appointments that can easily be changed to the preferred time slots. It also serves as a calendar for managing medicines in which the user can input the medicine name, the day and time they want to take it and other details. The app will then set an alarm to remind the user to take the medicine. The app assists self-diagnosis according to the user symptoms by giving simple solutions 
to simple problems. Last but not least, Pocket Nurse allows for direct communication with volunteers like students who are pursuing a medical path. Using a crowdsourcing system, these medical students can sign up as volunteers on the app. An elderly having an uncontrollable cough can easily call for help and have a volunteer pick up. The volunteer can access a brief summary of the patient's medical records to save time in asking general repeated questions. They will then act as a guardian giving a basic diagnosis, like a simple solution to drink more water or take an over-the-counter drug. In more serious cases, they will not prescribe heavy medicines, but instead refer the patient to a doctor who can. Of course, volunteers have the option to decline a call when they are busy, in which case the call will transfer to another volunteer. So why medical students? In our current world, services to aid all types of people are mostly available. The big problem is to connect the people who can help to the people who need help. With this function, we are essentially providing the elderly and medical students with a communication platform that benefits both parties. The elderly are assisted while saving money and time on travel and doctor expenses, and the medical students gain experience. A concern you may be having is whether medical students have the time for this program. In my school, for instance, biology students must gain experience through extracurricular activities for CAS, a mandatory core component of the IB diploma program, and signing up with pocket nurse will be a project that they would, could use to fulfill their community service. As the volunteers can sign up through a crowdsourcing system, it will not require any funding. To pay the cost of a mobile app developer, a designer, a data scientist, and for advertising, the project will be open for donations from companies and individuals in order to make the app free. After surpassing this goal, money will be used to invest back into the project, to adjust it so that we can also reach people living in rural areas through technology such as voice recognition for less advanced phones and more. Our research of the medical field has led to finding two of our main competitions, Symptomate and Holodoc. This simple table shows the features that pocket nurse have that our competition do not. Pocket nurse includes AI diagnosis and a medication reminder. When we were designing the prototype, we also made sure to keep in mind that pocket nurse is targeted and designed especially for the elderly. So it operates on a very simple interface and design and watches out for specific ailments like Alzheimer's, diabetes, and dementia that are more commonly experienced by elderly. Our app is unique for its simplicity for elderly who are not familiar with technology, whereas other apps may be hard for, tech, for the elderly to navigate through. Most elderly are being left prone to sickness each day with nothing to fend for themselves. With their strong will to care for the vulnerable elderly, we will change this and make the world a healthier place. Pocket Nurse. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Natalia from the Pocket Nurse. So now it's the Q&A session. Dear judges, the time is yours. Hello. Hello. Hello, Natalie. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Your prod, your your app is uh, already has a uh, de already developed. It's already developed. It's already functioning or just a prototype, the one that you just showed. No, our app is just. No, our app is um. And our um, next step will um, be to create a working application based on our prototype that can be launched in source. So it's not yet developed. You just plan to develop it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And why you only choose only the old people? So we our primary motivation in creating this app because is because of the need for an access tool for healthcare management that focuses on aiding the elderly. Because the other um, apps that I have shown earlier, um, the, our competition, they are all for um, people who are already accustomed to using technology. And so our market is focused on the elderly who are struggling with this. So we make it simpler for them. So your app will be very easy for, <coughs> for the old people. Yes, that is our. Okay. So I have a question around, um, so at first uh, you mentioned so what I like about um, your idea is that you're connecting people to um, nurses and uh, to people who are not doctors, because doctors are obviously the most expensive of the group. But one of the concerns that I might have for this is how do you know that the advice given is actually good advice? Because that's one of the concerns is that 
you know, a poor diagnosis may result in someone having a really bad event. So who's responsible for that? Are you responsible or are the volunteers responsible? So the volunteers will be required to pass a test of their knowledge of over-the-counter, like general over-the-counter drugs and their ability to give advice that are similar to the advice that adults give to their parents. So um, after, they, after a call, they will also be submitting a sort of report of what solution they have given that we can take it into review and also credibility of each of the volunteers. Thank you. Um, I do have one more quick question, which is, uh, so from a business model perspective, where do you think your revenue comes from? Um, well, we, for the app itself to uh, work, we would need, um, we would need money, we would need funding from other companies and um, for their companies, they have a SR fund that they could use, um, and also from individuals who are interested in helping. So we will use social media to appeal to these um, people who are interested in donating for our cause, our project. But I, I guess who, who, who will pay for you? Who will pay for your time? And who will pay for the time for the people to say review the advice or the ongoing support? So where, where do you think some of that ongoing funding comes in? Uh, we did calculate um, that if each of the um, each of the subscribers would pay only five thousand rupiah per month, ten thousand rupiah per month. But uh, actually, we will only need 2,000 subscribers to break even, which is actually very little. Um, however, we were, we were holding back on that for the meantime, considering we are um, looking at elderly who might who might not have extra um, extra money to that would be our fallback in the start of. Yeah. Thank you. The only addition in the case I have for that would be. I don't know if the elderly are your, your the elderly are your audience, they're the people who benefit, but maybe it's the children who are your customers. Maybe they're the ones that pay for the elderly parents to be on your app. Yeah, um, we did branch out to, to the sense that one would be um, appealing to the children of the elderly who are looking for a way to take care of their parents. And then the other, the other branch would be the elderly themselves in case don't have anyone to take care of them and they're just looking for um, help for themselves. Thank you. Okay, my, my comment, the, the idea is very good. And uh, yeah, we be looking for something like this, but but the model of business still have some something that you need to find someone who's going to pay you. Yeah, if you don't charge uh, the old people because they are old, right? So how are you going to find the money? You need to to know how to answer so you can you can be the the best uh you know company, but you still have to looking for. But it's 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 okay that you you find the, all the solution and you find all the problem. You can think about uh, the the big picture like this. Okay, keep going. Yeah. So in Korea, we have a very similar it's a prototype and you know, it's a business model. So they has a. It's a business model to make money. So you're also using a good one. In the future, you have time, maybe you can contact me. I can help you how to develop the good business model one because we had a couple of the similar business in South Korea already. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, so thank you so much. That was the pocket nurse team from Indonesia. Let's give applause to the first team of the Teen Challenger Group. Now coming up, we have the second uh, team. KMIDS from Thailand. Are you guys here? Uh, yes, we are here. Okay, great. So you can just start if you are ready. Greeting judges. Uh, today, I'll be presenting our project class break. So there are two problems we are trying to solve. First is the overflowing plastic waste, and secondly is the broken pavements. 
because uh, the production cost of plastic is low and it is easy to, repro to produce, uh, companies tend to use plastics for their products and for their packaging. Therefore, last year in the year 2020, approximately 367 million tons of plastic is being thrown to the world. And with this, 100 uh, million marine life dies a year. There are also another problems in which uh, broken pavement is found across the countries. And these broken pavements is one of the biggest obstacles for those on wheelchair, the elderly or the disabled to travel around. Introducing Plastbrick. So Plastbrick is the combinations of unused plastic and sand. It is proven to be five to seven times stronger than ordinary bricks because plastic has a strong compression strength because of its uh, fibrous natures. If we use this with our bricks, then it will make our bricks much stronger. Secondly, uh, plastic is 66% cheaper than conventional bricks because we save a lot of costs on the material use because well, we use the plastic waste. Now, we, uh, we also strive to use the unrecyclable plastic or more of uh, the plastic that no one wants to recycle. Most companies recycle plastic that is non-pigmented or uh, is like no color in it. We, we want to recycle the one that is pigmented because no one wants to recycle it. Therefore, we can help in reducing the amount of plastics. Now, this is a simple diagram of how our uh, business will work. First is our source of plas plastic waste. We will get our plastic from three main sources. First is we can get defective plastics from the production line in factories. Uh, we believe this will be a sustainable source of plastic waste supply for our company. Secondly, we can also work with community service club at the university to help us collect and sort out the plastic, plastic waste. Now, uh, we can also get extra material from other donors online and etc. cetera. Now, uh, we can, the making of plastic brick. Uh, plastic brick is sand uh, mixed with shredded plastic waste being melted at 200 degrees Celsius and compressed into a mold. And there we have plastic brick. Uh, our target customers is company with CSR in their uh, activities and social organizations that are interested in our product. We can sell our product to these companies so they can use for their own project. Our main source of uh, our funding will be through three main sources, two of which is from our, uh, our list earlier. Uh, we can get it from the donations from uh, companies with CSR and social organizations, and we can sell, uh, sell our product to them. Now, there are other sources we can get uh, our funding, which is social media, because now today, social media is a great uh, way for uh, startup to uh, promote their companies and get, uh, get money for their businesses. So we can create a stories and post uh, on social media, ask for those who empathize to help donate to our businesses. So when we get our funding, we can collect the plastic, make the plastic and distribute it to the ones that needed it. So this is our team from Thailand, KMIDS, consisting of me, uh, me Meepu, and Tonum, Punch, and Kevin. And thank you for listening. Okay, thank you so much for the pitching. Uh, now let's uh, move to the Q&A session. So for the judges, so please, um, you can ask your question. So you need to, yeah, you need to work with some of the factory that uh, give you some of the technologies to do it, right? You already uh, work with some factory, right? Yes, uh, we'll be collaborating with factories in the beginning when we jumpstart our project. So, so you, you already have talked to them that 
this uh, innovation can make it? Uh, yes, uh, we, we have, uh, we haven't actually contacted them directly, but we have found uh, lots of, we, we have done lots of research on the internet and found that uh, this project actually works and there are, and uh, it can be created easily. Uh, yes. Okay. And how are you going to sell it after you finish the product? Uh, after we finish the product, uh, we, we want to sell it to, again, the company with CSR and the social or other social organizations that, well, for instance, in Thailand, there are social organizations that uh, help construct uh, public toilets in temples and many more. So we can contact them and ask whether they want to use our product that is uh, stronger and cheaper and is good for the environment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, can I ask you uh, in which stage are you now? Are you have the product already or you are uh, developing the prototype? Uh, we, we are in the stage where we are just uh, having have, have the ideas and are uh, developing the prototype. We, we don't, we haven't uh, contact uh, com uh, factories and create it yet, but we know that it is possible. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, so you need to uh, talk to the Habitat because Habitat is help the people to build a house for them. So there is uh, like using the CSO one, also looking for the good partner. Yes. So your is a bit smaller, very good for with them if you work together one, so. Thank you for your suggestion. Um, do you know how much it costs to produce a brick? Have you uh, done that? Uh, yes, uh, for, we have calculated and for a plastic brick, uh, taking into account all the transportation fees and the production costs is approximately uh, seven to eight baht per brick, which is which is a lot cheaper than conventional brick, which is like fifteen to twenty baht. Thank you. I think um, uh, what I what I found really interesting about your presentation was I think the solution is good, but I think I would encourage you, um, just as Michael has done, to maybe think about exactly who your customer is because um, companies with corporate social responsibilities or social, these companies, they, they're, they're not necessarily motivated by, motivated by the brick itself, right? But the people who want your material will be construction companies. You've just demonstrated that you can save 50% of um, production cost, uh, yeah, the supply cost. So think about what companies are building and using bricks and target them instead. Because one of the things that I'm concerned about, and uh, this is probably a broad statement for all the other um, groups as well, is relying on platforms like social media. It's a great way to build brand, but I, it's very inconsistent for actual money. Whereas if you can think about exactly who wants to buy bricks cheaper, you've, 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 you've got that, right? So that's, that's where I would encourage having to think about who your customer exactly is and what they'd be willing to pay for. <clears throat> Yes, thank you. Okay, still have uh, around 15 seconds. Is there any more questions from the judges? Okay, I think that's enough. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. Uh, okay, yep, for KMIDS team. Now, coming up, we have the next team. It's the third uh, team from Team Team Challenger Group. Uh, we have, I don't know whether I pronounce it, CAP or KAB team from the Philippines. Are you guys here? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so it's supposed to be KAB team or CAP team? Um, it's pronounced as CAP team. CAP team, okay. 
So once again, uh, your pitching session will be five minutes and another Q&A session for five minutes. If you are ready, you can just start. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well and we are the CAD team and I am Bethany. Here in our city, as you can see in the pictures, we are undergoing lockdowns once in a while, wherein not everyone is permitted to be going outside even if they need to get their necessities. Like me as a student and a teenager, I can't go to town to buy the supplies I need for school. Or like my parents and grandparents who also can't go out and buy our food and things we need at home. And like my friends who live alone and don't know how to attend to the services in their homes. Also, professionals who had lost their jobs due to the pandemic. So those are the problems we want to solve. So as a team, we made the application called Cab Logistics, which is an errand service app where you can purchase your needs safely and easily. And we can help you deal with the services you need in your home. And we also help the retrenched workers to have a livelihood. Hi, I'm Kendra Ryan, and I will be discussing the features of cab logistics. In our application, customers have options on which service they would need, such as plumbing, electrician, cleaners, and more. If the customer chose carpentry, all they have to do is click on call now. The communications and operations management will then get in touch in service professionals based on their availability and endorse the needed work. It is also the same process here with the errand services. We have grocery, pharmacy, water delivery market, and school supplies. Our cutoff is 5 p.m. so that the errand workers will still have the time to purchase the customer's needs. In the pharmacy part, they just need to upload the list of medicine. They need, if it's over the counter medicines, if the medicine needs a doctor prescription, they will need to upload a clear picture of the prescription their doctor gave them. It is allowed to buy prescribed medicines in pharmacies as long as they see the prescription. Since here in the Philippines, a lot of doctors are online appointments. Our errand services is a customizable. It depends on the needs of our clients or customers' needs. And our errand workers will do best to look for the items the clients need. Hi, my name is Angel and I'm going to talk about our market and our competitive advantages. Our market mainly focuses in helping the locals in Baguio City, especially the elders and PWDs who can do some household chores and can't go out. Teenagers or students who can't go out because of age restrictions, working groups who can't do groceries because the work, they work for the whole day. First competitive advantage we have is that our app is safe and easy to use. Our app can be downloaded in Android phones and iOS. This app can be used by teenagers or students and elders. We promote local businesses, small businesses here in Baguio City like stalls in our city market. We give employment to those who lost their jobs and retrench individuals and working students. Next, we give friendly prices on our services compared to others that have additions in their service fee. We also give surprise discounts and freebies to those who are, with, who are availing services. When there are issues or concerns like unavailable products, it will be resolved within 12 hours. Again, we are the team CAB and we are the junior high school students aging from 13 to 15 years old. We appreciate the opportunity with you. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening to our presentation. Okay, thank you so much, CAB team. Uh, from now, let's have the Q&A session for another five minutes.
Okay. Thank you. Now the judges, you can start asking your questions. Yeah, maybe from my side. Uh, hi, Captain. Um, I, I want to ask you about, uh, do you already calculated uh, uh, the cost of uh, this kind of things and then how you guys want to promote it? I mean, how you can start it because you will create like an app and then you need uh, people who will use it, right? So you need... Uh, you need uh, the user, you need the customer, kind of, kind of it. So I want to uh, make sure with you how you guys can make it happen. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, sir, for that question. Um, our fund that we'll use to start our business will come from initial investments from our families and eventually crowdfunding. Um, for crowdfunding, we do collective effort of individuals who pull their resources to support startup businesses. And we also do 20 to 30% from the sales of our partners. Uh, 20, 80%? 20 to 30%, sir. 20 to 30%, okay. And how, how, you, how you start this? How, how you can start the, the apps, how you can gather people to use the apps? Um, we will do that through social media, sir. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. So I, I have a question which is around... Um, I guess, access. When, when you started your presentation, you talked about how um, business, a, a lot of people are under lockdown and it's hard to get access to logistics, but your app is about getting other people to move around and provide services and provide logistics. So I guess my question is, how do you how, how, how do you, how are you planning to, I guess, get around the issue where, you know, if there's an area and everyone's locked down, can, how do you, how will you ensure that your people who provide services can get into those areas? Um, here in the Philippines, providers of necessities are allowed to serve. I also have another question in that case, um, which is uh, coming back to um, the business model of it. So um, you, you mentioned getting um, profit from sales. So is it that um, the business providers are the people who will be paying for your um, service or is it the customers who are paying for your service? Um, the customers too. So I think in every country that has a, like a delivery service, they have it, the similar one. I don't know, in currently Philippines, they have it too. So I personally recommend you to research their business model, delivery system service one. So you have to research them and then compare your business model with them. So find the small niche market. So how to enter in there. Maybe you can start from your own small reasons, but when I think big, huge, a lot of money going there to delivery. So nowadays, many using people's small device and they use a motorbike, anything, bicycle to travel. 
So maybe if you got a good business model, compare there to study a lot, and then you can find a good business model to start your business one in your local start. Yes, sir. Um, there are other similar companies as ours, but they're always usually fully booked, especially uh, at peak hours. So that is a problem that we saw and came up with cab logistics to answer that problem. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you so much. So that's the end of the session for Cup Team from the Philippines. Let's give an, uh, a round of applause for them. And coming up, it's the next team that we have here. It's the fourth uh, team for today for the Team Challenger Group. We have So It Begins from Malaysia. Are you guys here and ready? Okay. So if you are ready, you can just start. Thank you. So who oh, wanna so show the slide one? I'm so sorry, there's a technical difficulty. Um, okay. I forgot to adjust the system preferences, so I'll need to quit and join back. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm so sorry for that again. Okay, take your time. Okay, so while waiting for the So It Begins team, so the next team, please prepare yourself. We have Hope from Bangladesh and then YBL team from Thailand. And the last one is the Youth of Aguiar, also from Thailand. Uh, once again, uh, we do have this evaluation criteria that the judges will uh, use for today. It's uh, the innovative idea maximum for 25 points, and then a clear business model, also maximum 25 points, as well as competitive advantages compared to competitors. And the last one is the effective uh, presentation skills. And for the final pitching, uh, you will have to do your pitching for five minutes and then continued by the five minutes Q&A by the judges and the score itself, it will be taken from uh, the mid presentations, the one that you had yesterday, it's uh, the 30% part and the other 70% will be taken from today's final presentation. Okay. Okay, now that it seems it's already, you can see the screen. Yep, if you are ready, you can just start. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes, it's clear. Okay. A very good evening to our fellow contestants and esteemed judges. Hi, we are Team So It Begins from Sri Kedu Secondary School in Malaysia. Hi, I'm Megan, and together with Heidi, Nicole, Nadia, and Caleb, it is an honor to be able to present our project to you all today. The world we live in is not an ideal one. Due to the movement control order, thousands have lost their jobs and are struggling to support their families. PPE litters beaches and leaks microplastics into the water. Fast fashion companies are dumping fabric into landfills by the ton. The death toll rises as people ignore SOPs and proper mass usage. Change has to start now before it's too late. How can we fix this? It's simple. Our project, So It Begins, is a sustainable program that aims to provide reusable masks to underprivileged communities to ease their burden while simultaneously providing jobs to those who need them. How can we achieve this? It starts with the collection of the materials. Our masks will be made of recycled fabrics, specifically polyester, denim, 
cotton and cotton blends that will be collected via a donation drive that involves all, all schools on our school campus. We hope to work with existing school clubs to sort the fabrics. We aim to collect enough fabric to reach our goal of sewing 1,500 masks. After being sorted, the fabrics will be transported to 20 tailors. These tailors include OKU tailors as well as single mothers. We hope to work closely with organizations such as Community Tukang Jahid, an organization that works with single mothers to seal clothing. To get the context of these single mother tailors, each tailor will earn 225 ringgit with each batch of masks made, each batch containing 75 masks. We will also design infographics on proper mask usage and mask care in order to solve the issue of lack of education on proper mask usage. When distributing, we plan to target the B40 community, specifically old folks' homes, orphanages, food banks, and homeless shelters. As it would be difficult for us to carry out these distributions ourselves, we aim to partner with existing organizations such as Kachara Soup Kitchen, Philanthropy Funky Galadangan, and the Shelter Home for Children to carry out said distributions. Instead of donating all 1,500 masks that will be made, we are donating 60% of the masks and selling 40%. This is to further fund our program in the future. All profits gained from selling the masks will go to the payment of tailors to increase mask reduction. This way, our program has a sustainable source of funding. To increase the efficiency of our program, we have decided to utilize social media to fulfill three main objectives, awareness, marketing, and business. Using Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, our social media pages will be hubs of information regarding partner organizations, as well as information on proper mass usage. We will also be using social media as our main business site and to track our progress and growth over time. How can we encourage people to buy our masks? Care packages for friends are very popular these days as people cannot show their love for one another by meeting up. Introducing the Buddy Box, a care package containing hand sanitizer one of our reusable face masks, dessert, and a handkerchief and hand cream. We will be partnering with small businesses in Malaysia to get these supplies. The handkerchiefs will be made from SS cloth from mask production. We will promote the body boxes to, and encourage people who receive a box to send one to a friend to keep the chain of kindness going. After meticulous calculation, we have come up with the budget as shown. Our initial cost rounds up to about 5,000 ringgit. Clean profits made after selling the masks will be 7,000 ringgit. Underprivileged communities don't have the same opportunities that we do to stay afloat this pandemic. By implementing So It Begins, we hope to provide those opportunities for them. Change starts from somewhere, and we want to stand up and proudly say that with us, So It Begins. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Let's give a round of applause for the So It Begins. Um, now, let's proceed to the Q&A session. So, uh, the time is yours, judges. So, uh, this is an interesting one for me because uh, I've actually, um, in color space, we actually thought about doing something sort of similar as well um, because uh, the mask was a really big thing here in Australia too. Uh, I'm curious as to whether you've thought of um, other things that can be created in addition to masks. And I say this because I know that, say, for example, in the hospitals here, in nursing homes, often the doctors and the nurses need scrubs they need the, the big sort of baggy clothing they use in hospitals. And that's another type of a product they can use. So I'm curious as to whether you've looked beyond just masks, given that you have um, a, uh, a community of tailors. Um, for things like medical equipment, like scrubs, we were a bit wary about going into that because scrubs need to be made out of very specific materials compared to reusable masks where you can just insert a filter and, you know, common daily fabrics like denim or cotton, polyester can be used. So for scrubs, it is something that we will need to do a lot more research on, but we really appreciate the idea. Thank you. So your one is like a social design entrepreneur's one. So how can you to keep your business going 
Right. So what is your continual business model? I'll keep doing one. So because you said that we can ask the people to donate one, but sometimes it's not easy to donate. So how can you make your business sustainable? Well, in our original plan, we said that 40% of the mass produced would be used to sell for a profit to make our business much more sustainable, whereas 60% will be donated. So using those profits made from the 40% sold, we will use it to pay our tailors and hire more tailors to further expand this project. So, so do you have any kinds of like a designer to design? Because in Korea, we have a lot of the you know, different color with different design you, when you wear the mask one nowadays, because more than two years wear the mask, the people feel a little bit boring. So they create their own unique design. So do you have any such a different kinds of design things come out or not? Uh, yes, because uh, all our fabrics are donated from different people all over our school. All, all of these masks will be unique to every person. No two people will have the same mask. I have another question. Um, in terms of competitive advantage, what would you say is something that distinguishes you from you know, as Michael put, uh, just sort of mentioned, there's programs like that in Korea. In Australia, we also have these types of programs, the essential enterprises that create this as well. What would set So It Begins apart from other social enterprises already in this area? Well, um, oh, Megan, oh. go ahead. Um, so, what we feel is our biggest um, advantage compared to our competitors as, is, as Nadia also said, our uniqueness. Because nowadays, nowadays, everyone wants to have an, a unique mask that is only to ourselves. Um, if I could add on. Another advantage that we have is in our area, there aren't a lot of reusable mask producers that donate their profits to charity or things like that. And a lot of people want to help out, but the thing is accessibility to helping out or giving their money to charity is usually something that puts them off because it's very hard. By providing these reusable masks, something that they already need because double masking with a fabric mask is a trend now in Malaysia. Um, we provide them an easy alternative and an easy way to you know, protect themselves and also help. So that's a selling point of our program. Uh, on top of that, I, I would like to highlight that the price we sell on Marx is actually on an average marketing price, although it's for charity, because all profits goes to the uh, needies directly. Thank you. Uh, is there any more questions? Okay, so thank you so much. So it begins for the performance of today. Now let's move to the next theme. Let's see. Okay, so after so it begins theme, now we have hope theme from Bangladesh. Are you guys here already? Yeah, we're here. Okay, great. So, yep. Maybe you can start sharing your screen. And if you are ready, you can just start. Okay, let's start. Rashid, a 15-year-old boy living in a small town in Bangladesh. Now one day, Rashid's father starts to experience severe headaches and Rashid doesn't know what to do. It's raining outside and the nearest hospital 
is four hours away. He doesn't even know if they can afford the treatment. In the end, they decide not to go and the headache starts getting better. But despite that, Rashad's father feels that something is amiss. But he tells his son that, son, everything's going to be all right. Just hope for the best. And everything was all right, but only for nine months. Because afterwards, the headaches came back stronger. And this time, it didn't go away. A couple of days later, Rashid's father passes away of cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you this story to highlight some of the major problems of our global healthcare system. Millions of people, just like Rashid and his father, are suffering. And we ask, for how much longer will they continue to suffer? Clearly, a change is needed. And we, me, Jemima Chahin Jenia, and my teammates, Bala, Devjuti, and Ihan, we present you our idea, Reach. It is an online platform that will bring, bring doctors and patients together. Let's relate our idea with the story that they really just shared with you. In that story, Rashid and his father were in a situation where it was raining really badly. So they can't really go outside to a hospital instantly. Rather, using our online platform, they'll be using online interface to connect with the doctor instantly. They live four hours away, which is very far and without a vehicle, impossible to reach. But with our online platform, it's just four minutes away. Now, I would like to draw your attention to this particular problem because this is a problem which has been unaddressed for far too long. It is a problem of a lack of a middle ground. When Rashid's father felt that something was amiss, why didn't he go to the hospital? Well, maybe he couldn't afford the treatment, but maybe, and this applies to millions of millions of people, maybe he could afford that treatment, but he felt that it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worthwhile spending so much money solely based off of his intuition. Next slide, please. Currently, our society offers two main options, the expensive traditional appointments, and these appointments only people with lots of money and lots of time can access. The other option is simply you don't pay anything, but you don't do anything either. And this is the option that most people choose for these minor issues, for these minor intuitions. They don't clear their doubts. There is no middle ground. Reach provides this middle ground to these people. Now, let's take a moment to appreciate our business idea. Reach will not only be providing consumers with world-class experiences, but also those will be affordable, simple, and easy to access. The vital point for our target market is our middle ground. We offer budget-friendly consultancies with trustworthy doctors for people belonging to every income bracket. Further, we also have emergency service callers to help you with any health issues or queries. Premium service holders will be assured priority along with quality. And finally, in future, we plan to dominate the technologically handicapped market, meaning those who are still not familiar with today's modern era. You're muted. Genia, uh, you're muted. Sorry, I'm sorry. Let's introduce you to our business model. So our prior claim is that we introduce you to very cheap, affordable consultation options, but maintaining quality. And how do we do that? This graph represents you um, relation of minutes to price pricing schemes in our business. 
So we offer low cost for low minute uh, for less minutes and high cost for more minutes. However, we also offer premium end services that will make sure uh, they'll uh, provide the customer customers with a priority um, services and preferences. But we also have standard, the one minute and two minute sessions are standard. Okay, so the time's up for the baking. Maybe for the hope team, you can save your explanation uh, for the Q&A session later on. Okay, now it's uh, another five minutes for the Q&A session. The time is yours, Shages. So maybe you do not finish your presentation. I will give you one more minute. So try to finalize your explanation within the minute. So whom are we employing? We're employing leading doctors who provide trustable and reliable uh, services and also fresh graduates because there might be a, a, a deficit of doctors to keep up with the demand of the services that we provide. So they will provide short-term meetings and minor consultancies and emergency services. We, we pay them through waiting system, a commission-based payment, and also waiting system to improve their incentive and quality. Waiting system is by the customers to improve the incentive and quality of services. Let's look at our competitive advantages. It's essential that we talk about our competitive advantages. Number one is the middle ground. Our price scheme makes it affordable for everyone. Next, we employ fresh graduates to the rating system. And flexible schedules makes it attainable for all to you know, you know, fix a doctor appointment in a point of the day, in a part of the day. And finally, low operation costs ar arising from less expenses that we have to uh, bear. Thank you for listening to us. There any questions from the judges? So you only hire the, the student, the graduate student only, the fresh graduate student, or you you also working with some nurse or some? Yeah. Um, we mainly hire leading doctors for their high-end services, and we understand that their demands are quite high. So they may not be able to provide the most affordable services. To cater to this, the affordable services, we also hire fresh graduates because then their services will be readily available for those who may not be able to bring out a lot of money. Okay. So, so there's a big market for the, the fresh graduate student in, in Bangladesh that you can work with them. You have the number of the student. Yes, right now there is a right now there is a big market, especially because a lot of people after their undergraduates they take some time off, uh, get into some part time jobs to support maybe their family, and then they want to do their masters, right? So, in that time gap, we think because of that there is a good enough supply. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. So am, am I right in understanding that, um, so in, if you're targeting, uh, it, it, are you targeting Bangladesh is, is my first part of the question. But my second part is, so are there no other competitors offering this at the moment? Yes, we would like to begin with uh, Bangladesh at first. Yeah. And as for competitors, we think, Currently in Bangladesh, as for online hospitals, there aren't many competitors, but the ones which do exist, their prices are pretty high. So they don't provide that low price, two minute, three minute consultancy options because we provide these options, which allows us to tap into the emergency services market or the minor health issue market.
Okay. Do we still have another question from the judges? Um, okay, uh, from my side, um, can, can, you, can you explain again uh, about how, how you will make money for, for your business? Uh, okay, so we are currently, we are tapping into three major markets. Number one, for minor health issues. Let's say you take this medicine and currently you're experiencing some medical side effects. So you just want to make sure with a doctor, like a small two minute appointment, that is this normal? Is this actually supposed to happen? Should I do more checkups? Mm -hmm. We think a large portion of our revenue will come from these minor issues. The second portion is for emergency services. Let's say you uh, burn your hand due to boiling water. You want some immediate uh, advice. We think another large portion of our revenue is going to come from here. But lastly, we're also providing premium services. So high-end leading doctors, let's say talking about, as you're feeling some major problems in, uh, in your chest, you fear it might be heart problems. So here you can take consultations from these doctors and there's also a major source of our revenue. So uh, we're meaning to say that your premium will be charged higher than the, the basic one? Yes, of course, because the premium will naturally be um, longer appointment durations. Because for a minor medical, let's say, side effects of medicine, or you burnt your hand, you don't really need 10 minutes, 15 minutes appointment. Two minutes is enough. Mm -hmm. So naturally, they will be lower cost. Then I think I'm, I'm curious, like what uh, uh, Scott mentioned just now, do you have any competitors I mean, like, do you have existing apps right now who solve that kind of issue? Currently, um, our existing competitors, they are also providing services, uh, for example, high-end services with leading doctors. But these two-minute, three-minute small appointments for minor health issues, no one is currently offering this service. Okay. So you, you, you mean that that's the, that's the difference of your... Your service yes. and others. All right. Okay. Thank you. That's our main point. Okay. Thank you so much. So that's the the end of the pitching and also Q and A from Hope Team Bangladesh. Let's give applause to them. Now coming up, we have the sixth group of today from the Team Challenger group. We have YPL from Thailand. Let's check whether they are here already and ready to pitch. Okay, YPL team. Okay, hi, YPL team, are you here already? Yep, okay, I guess they are here, but still. Hi, hi, YBL team. Uh, hi. Hi, okay, now it's your team's turn. Maybe you can start. Okay, great. Okay, so, yep, if you are ready, so you can just start your pitching for five minutes. And then after that, followed by the Q&A session for another five minutes. Hi, we are Cricket Tears. Our project based on this problem. First, world, pop world population increasing. Second, need for alternative protein sources. And the last one, need for eco-friendly food production. The FAO forecast that by 2050, the world's population will increase to 9 billion. Will we be able to produce enough food or will we have shortages? Problem with traditional protein sources. The price of protein in is, quite, is quite high in Thai about 
uh, more than $30. This is it's more expensive than some family can afford. Environmental problems, do you know livestock creates a lot amount of CO2 and requires a, a lot amount of water and land. It's time to find an alternative protein sources. A new way, how about cricket? Ideal solution. We are not complete with powder protein, but we complete with protein from animal. Crickets are loaded with protein, so we're gonna process them into other another products, somewhat like local Thai food, cricket flour. And this this model shows the cricket production process between school and community. Why it's low eco friendly? It's eco friendly because they use less of resources and take not much time to harvest. Let's compare them together. You will see the cricket use the least amount of food. So how we do human slaughter? When we have to harvest them, we will make them to sleep and freeze them all. No hurt, no slaughter houses. Why we use cricket? First, crickets use less feed, less land, less water, and less create pollution. Second, it only took 40 days, then can harvest the produce. Third, our school make a cricket farm. Fourth, some people don't enjoy to eat insects, but compared to cockroach and worms, cricket is the best choice. Fifth, it's eco-friendly production. And this is our marketing. We will start at community and school. Our, our second customer, villagers near the near our school because we want to work with the villager near the school because we are boarding school and we have access to many nearby village. Low income people, school in north and northeastern Thailand because the, the school can use can use lunch budget to buy cricket and many people in this area familiar eating crickets. Online customer and local restaurant. This is cricket nutrition compared to other insects and compared to traditional animal protein. Cricket are really high protein and other important nutrients. Cricket is the best seller of all insects on the global insect market. The cricket market is growing every year. We expect the cricket market to grow more than 25% by 2022. This picture shows that in Thailand, cricket are the most popular insect in the Thai insect market and grow up every year. This is the cause of raising cricket based on our school farm. This is timeline egg to harvest. And this is a product from cricket. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much from YBL team from Thailand. Now let's proceed to the Q&A session for another five minutes with the judges. So, you can Everyone, so my Recording in progress. By, by uh, seal it in the cricket powder. And and if we have a chance, we will 
develop them to be another to be another product. Okay. I guess my second question on top of that is you're planning on selling this to students so and to, and to schools so I mean crickets is insect-based food is has been around this is uh, it, it's an existing idea in many ways but one of the challenges is what we might call the yuck factor so for some you know how do you know that students will want to eat more crickets. I, I, I know you included a, a graph that says the, the consumption is growing, but I just wanted to know how do you think you can overcome the problem to, of more people saying, yes, I just want crickets? Uh, uh, people in this area are familiar with the cricket, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we have a plan to make it be a Kurikake is a is a is is a Japanese it's like a Japanese food like we 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 put it on the top of the, the rice and is is very easy to eat cricket and easy to eat rice. Cool, thank you. Um, from me, so. How how you guys wants to create the the food from cricket so that everybody can enjoy it? Can can enjoy. Uh, we we will uh mash mash cricket be a uh, powder and 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 do look into uh, another yeah. product like a snack or cookies for bakery uh or a local mm -hmm. food. Okay, so you mean that you will not uh, like making a cricket you will make the cricket to be like cookies or like uh, uh, something else which one that you prefer to make at first because that product is easy to eat and and if we not tell them that it's made for cricket they will eat it right Yes, uh, as you mentioned that you you guys wants to make it more easy to eat to be yeah. eaten because not everybody uh, enjoy it, right? Right. So my question is, which one will be your ultimate product to be sell to be sold to the people? Uh, a snack, like cookies. Yeah, or uh, snack bar. Okay, so you you haven't decided yet which one that you will make as your priority. Uh, not not now, but okay. but cookie is 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 easiest to eat. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Okay, is there any more questions from the judges for the YPL team? Okay, I think it's all clear. Thank you so much. Let's give a, a round of applause to YPL team. Yep. Next, coming up, we have um, the last but not least here. So we have youth of your team from Thailand uh, in this Teen Challenger Group uh, final pitching. So YPL, uh, youth of your team, are you guys here? Um, we are right here. Okay, so great. So now you can uh, start preparing your slides. And if you are ready, you can just start your pitching. 
yours or yours, your futures, your choice. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, every family is always discuss about their sons, about what their son want to grow up and be in the become in the futures, but in the other ways, their son don't have the motivations or any experience about the job, so that he don't know that what he want to become in their futures. From the research from Holly Packard's companies found that ninety percent of parents want to force us to create a new experience to, for their parents, hey, for, their, for their kids or their son. So we create our solution. Our solutions are our goal. We will give opportunities to the teenagers who have an experience to the expert jobs buying to, we have a two, two sections. First, we will take a uh, expert to the teenagers for giving their, their advising or give the, sharing their experience to the kids. And next, we will bring the, the teenagers to the expert buildings for giving the experience or their advising. And this is our mission of their business. Our vision, we will make making teenagers to have a goals in life and our mission is motivate the yours to create goals in life. This is our business model. Uh, schools and parents we paying us, and we will trainings and ex, ex, experience and opportunities to the teenagers. And this is our market adoptions. First, we meet the expert. We will give the kids to meet the expert and give the experience. Second, well, uh, the payment, our payments of our camp is worse for payment. Third, the, the kids or teenagers will enjoy with the and happiness. And last one, we will motivate teenagers to create incomes. And our tradition is we have an experience about camp, uh, creating camps for, for kids and teenagers, and we have a good feedback. Compared to other business in the market, uh, our other business, there are specifics on the jobs and some of it are varieties, but the target is the senior high school students that have a many choice and opportunities, but us, yours of yours, will focus on the junior high student that have the parents supporting more than because they're still with their parents. And this is our team. We have many uh, person that have a experience for many, many ways. First, our CEO have a uh, owners of the Young Money Thailand page, Facebook. And next, our CFO have an experience with the cost of financials. Our CTO, he have a passion and knowledge about programming and technologies. See, our CEO have the most, he, she also the most the creation person in our teams. And last, CMO. Uh, uh, he has an experience in the marketing in the in his father's companies. Thank you for listening. And next is a Q and A sections. Okay, thank you so much uh, for youth of your team. So let's proceed to the Q and A section. Okay, so the the time is yours, judges. Okay, uh, maybe it's uh, from me. <clears throat> um, uh, my question, uh, I, I love the idea of what you guys want to do for uh, young people. Um, but my question is, uh, uh, 
Uh, Recording they, in progress. And most of them say they don't know where to go. They don't know which way they want to choose because they, if they showed it, they cannot share it anymore, right? And they can, they will share it when they go to university, and that is too late for them. So we use this one. Uh, the question is the to to make a, a specific job, right? But the main thing is I don't want to to like to be a the specific job. But I want to be like a uh, skill that that they they have to use in the future. Do you, do you get my point? Oh, yeah. So meaning to say that you actually not exactly preparing them at that moment to getting a job, but it's more about improving their skill. I will, I will. But first, I want I want them to have a goal first, okay. like the the goal for for the. For, for the for the future thank you you're welcome sir. so i like your idea but many people needed some mentoring and guidelines so especially they have to know about the missions goal of their life one but that is, is important but in the business area On a program, uh, three days, maybe a few hours, that kind of section, I think this is important. Thank you, sir. So I think we have to look into that deeper. And I think, yeah, it's a really short time, like for two days, three days to, to make them have a, have a mission or have a goal. But I think they have a way to do it because I, I used to be there. I used to be like non-go and just just staying for, 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 for no reasons. But I can I can go out from that. So I think I can I can tell them and the expert also can tell them. But we, we work into that deeper, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So you mentioned um, that you bring, I guess, experts into this experience. What's what's in it for the experts? You mean what what the experts get, right? Uh, we we give them the money because we get the money, right? The the parents or the school they pay us, so we give them the money, of course. But but I I planning for for the. But I don't sure if it's work or not. I try to use the the expert that already retired because they have a lot of experience, right? So they don't want any money anymore. They want to share their, their experience. But I don't sure if it's work or not. But I, I want to try that. I, I think the thing that um now really this is the closest thing I can think of for your um idea is like a career fair. Right, so for, and I don't know if this is where you are. So say in Australia, for example, we used to have in university, we have career fairs. And obviously that's university level, so not at the junior high level, but the idea there is that you get access um, to different ideas, to different career opportunities. Is that sort of fundamentally what you're thinking about? Uh, can, I, can I get the question again? Yeah, so what, what this sounds a lot like is a, a career fair. Um, so, because uh, so in Australia we used to have these fairs where um, students get together and they interview all these different businesses to understand what potential jobs and what careers they can create. And I just wanted to double check if you're if that's something that you're familiar with the the idea of a career fair. 
And if that's it, and if so, is that what you're trying to create? What should I answer? Yes. So, like, so, so as one of the mentors pointed out, a career fair or a job fair is—is is that what your um your youth of oh, your thinking about? Like, I try to shint. Mm. Yes, I think. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Thank you brother, sir. Sorry. Okay. Thank you so much. So that means as the end of uh the youth of your team teaching and also Q&A, it means that's the end of our uh, final teaching session from the teen challenger group, as well as our previous uh, young challenger group. So now um, maybe if you can share guys, so out of the six young challenger team and also seven, in challenger team which, which one is your favorite maybe you can drop in the chat box so which team other than your own team which one is your favorite okay so if you can sh just share your opinion okay so yep so thank you so much for all the judges for the back inside uh, questions that um, what is it, give them more idea to improve their projects, okay? And now before we move to the next session, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Scott or Henry to give uh, like some advices for the whole group here for their future improvements, let's say. Is there any advice? <laughs> Uh, hello, I guess uh, this is uh, supposed to be uh, Professor uh, Michael's um, cue to give advice, but he can't make it today. So I'll, um, I'm standing in for, for Professor Michael. So I just, uh, is that, is this my cue? Um, uh, I was told that. Uh, no, it's yes, yes, after yes, this yes. Yep. Yes, yes, after yes. this session, okay? Okay, okay. Oh, not yet? Okay. <laughs> okay, but if you have uh, like some advices for these uh, teams, so it's also fine. So you can share. Um, I, I would just uh, let the guest, uh, oh, the host um, confirm because I, I would just, he just rang me to <laughs> do okay. my, give yep. you my two cents. Okay, so this one is still the final pitching session. So we are trying to finish the session 